Welcome back to the Coach's Preview Show. My name is Josh Daishi. Today I'm joined by Chipotle Indians head women's basketball coach, Greg Franklin. Coach, another impressive week. Two wins, one against Tallahassee, and then you completed a three-game sweep of Pensacola, taking the record to 24-1, 8-1 overall in conference. What were you most impressed with in the two wins? Um, I thought we got some contribution from some players that uh, normally normally haven't been there. Uh, we've gotten the opportunity to be able to play uh, Chitty a little bit in the past game. Uh, I think to Leah Moore, every time she gets out there, she gets better. Uh, a lot of that has to do with you know me me being confident in her and her being confident in herself. Right now, she's gaining some very very important confidence going into this last stretch, uh, being that seventh person off the bench. And usually, whenever I get to tournament time, it's usually a seven eight man rotation. Anyways, uh, it's like listen. I listen to Kyle Parry, and he's complaining about being able to platoon them because he said usually he doesn't play more than seven or eight. Well, you know what, Coach Cal, <laughs> I would like to have that, that problem to be able to have a white and a blue platoon, but it is what it is. And, you know, one thing that the death problem has, has kind of hurt us a little bit, the, the style of play that we play. Uh, we like to run and jump. We like to press, multiple type presses. Uh, we like to come back and, and uh, get in our matchup and, and trap out of it. Uh, I've had to go to a little bit more just uh, traditional man-to-man, -man, but I think th this is something that we've talked about as a coaching staff and as a team. From that five-minute mark on against Tallahassee, where we made a 15-0 run, until the last game, I thought our defensive prowess was off the charts. I think it, it was one, some of the best I've had uh, just in terms of fighting screens, communication, uh, finishing the play with good box outs. Um, and I don't want to jinx this here. I'm going to knock on wood. Lean your head over. I'll give you a knock right there. But um, it has been very good, and hopefully we'll maintain that because that's going to be very important for us to get uh, multiple wins in the tournament time coming up. Coach, in the final three regular season games and heading into March and postseason, who would you like to see continue to make strides? Talia Moore. Um, Talia Moore and uh, Janisha Lindsay coming off the bench. Uh, Janisha is like a starter. I mean, you know, her and Atiana are in the game together. We're a little smaller, but I tell you what, we hawk the basketball unreal. I mean, we really bother some people uh, with some pressure. Uh, you know, and the physical, the physicalness of, of those two kids. I mean, they're not the tallest, but I tell you what, they're put together well. Uh, they're not going to get pushed around, trust me. I have to tone Atiana down a little bit. Sometimes she gets a little radical out there with those elbows and what have you. But uh, I'd rather have to tone somebody down than have to push them than get them going, you know. Um, but uh, when we have Janisha, Atiana, um, Sue, Rose, and Evelyn on the floor, that's a very physical, physical team. Now, Kendra comes in and brings quickness and length when she's in there, and T has quickness and length. But when you have that five right there, that's a very physical five. Coach, in your final three games, you're in position. Postseason almost seems to be a lock. Do you kind of tune it down in practice or you turn it up? Uh, right now, it's going to be, it, it'll be the same. We always want to be at that frenetic pace when we walk into practice, always. Um, the thing that we got to do, and I've got to do it, make a concerted effort as a coach, is I got to really make sure we're not overkill. We're going too long. Uh, keeping our kids fresh minds, fresh bodies, fresh emotionally. Uh, you know, I told somebody the other day, uh, if I wanted to be a coach and I look back in retrospect, what I should have, what I should have majored in is psychology. Because I tell you what, that's, that's the makeup of the game right now. If you can, you can get in their minds and get them to believe and get them to buy in uh, and get them to buy into each other, and, and that, that is so big. So big. I've watched teams get beat. Um, well, hey, let's just talk about the 30 for 30 that was on last night. I watched the, the 30 for 30 on, on the Miracle, uh, the hockey team. Uh, what they get beat 12 or 10 1, 10 2, uh, just a couple of weeks before, and then they come back and they beat the Russians uh, in the plate, the game before they won the gold medal, the next, I mean, two or three weeks later. Because that psyche, that mind, believing that you can actually do it, banding together to do something. That a common goal, some guys coming together, ladies coming together to do something for a common goal uh, and believing in the person next to you, believing in the guy that's directing you, that's showing you what, they, what you need to do. Uh, that's huge, the psychological part of it. How often do your players speak about the common goal and do they oftentimes, do they have that belief in each other that everyone's on the same page? You know, it's gotten better. 
uh, we talked about, uh, I guess it's a couple of weeks ago, Coach Johnson and I were sitting there talking about leadership and how you, you have, sometimes you have to manufacture it. If I'm the person that's always the voice, if you will, um, they numb that out. They, they turn it off. They do. Whether you, you can say, well, coach, you're a good coach, you're a great coach. Uh, this person's won all these games and you should believe. Uh, they tune it out, man, especially when you're having to say so much neg negative things. If I could come in there and I could say a few things negative and a lot positive and my players take care of the negative part, they police themselves. You know, when you make – I say this all the time, and speaking with Coach Johnson, we, do, we can make the team really good. I mean, we're both pretty uh, – we believe in ourselves and believe in what we're doing. But you talk about your teammates make each other – you're going to make each other better. Your teammates make each other better, right? And that's what – the teammates will make you great, will make you great. So, I mean, I, you know, I, I just – I think that 18, 19, 20-year-olds, that can turn quickly. So we're trying to do more of the same right now. 18, 19, 20-year-olds, that's that can turn quickly. So we're trying to do more of the same right now. So who is the voice? Who is the police officer on the team right now? I think Evelyn's really stepped up, you know, and I, and I think that that's showed everyone else how to be a leader as well. So I hear people saying things to each other with an honest dialogue. You need to pick it up. You, you need to make sure you got this covered. You, you got my back on this back screen right here. What, what, what's going on? I hear that honest dialogue with each other that, you know, about three weeks ago when we were talking about playing at Northwest, I really didn't have that. I had a lot of people hanging their heads, had a lot of people, you know, tuning me out, um, really unsure of where we could go because we did lose Jayla, but we had won 11, 12, 13 games without her and played in a great fashion. It's just we're not as deep. And she's a great basketball player in her own right, but we have a lot of really good basketball players. Um, you know, I, I think that the more that they got it, the, the better they play, and hopefully we'll progress more and more because I, I still think that, you know, our team has to progress from this point until the last game we play. We've got to keep, keep that hunger to get better, that get better every day, that chip to win the day. I know it's a cliche and a lot of people like to use it, but it is real. I mean, it is real. And if you don't have honest dialogue with each other, if you don't say what you're supposed to say to your teammate, then you're not a very good teammate, but you're not a friend. I mean, because a lot of times it, it, it's tough love and it's tough out there to be the best. And if I got to tell you, hey, this, this sucks, right now you really stink. You know, because your, your mind's not here. Your body's not here. Emotionally, you're not bought in. We need you here. And those conversations have started to come in the last two weeks, week and a half. So, Coach, it's fair to say that your team, in your, in your mind, is hitting the stride that they want to hit in mid-February. Well, I tell you, I, 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 I always hate, you know, I just got done saying be honest, but uh, I hate to say, yeah, that's where we're at. But, you know, when I looked at us the other night, the ball movement, uh, the attention to detail, um, people believing in their shooting. I mean, Rose Marie in the last couple of games have really, really turned it around. She was, had some shooting woes. Uh, whereas the first year she was off the charts, and that really helped us. Uh, but she's gained some confidence back. Uh, Kendra had a good game the other night shooting the basketball. I don't, I'm not going to say this, but I think we had five or six in double figures. Um, and we had some people that really, really uh, shared the basketball, made, made the extra, extra pass for that best shot ever we always talk about. Uh, so you know, I'm, I'm pleased with them right now, but am I, am I comfortable with things? I'm not comfortable, no. Never come. Coach, you head down to Gulf Coast on Wednesday. You beat them twice this year. Chelsea Gibson dropped 20 against Northwest, 15 against you guys. What makes her so hard to defend? Multiple positions. She plays a lot of different positions. Um, they play her at the three some. They play her at the four. Uh, the good thing, the luxury that I have is I have a kid named Rosemary Julian that plays a lot of different positions that can cover a point guard to a five. So, I mean, I, I, I don't have – I don't have any problem saying that Rose, you know, right now, uh, latter part of the conference, that she's where she needs to be. I don't have any problem with that because she works so hard. And she's got herself to this point. Most freshmen would hit a wall and lay on it. She hits a wall and she keeps digging. Uh, that's why I'm pretty comfortable that that matchup right there, I think we'll be all right. Coach, thank you for joining us on the pregame show. Good luck this week and we'll be following. Thank you, Josh.